didn't give them anything. So you are the one that's going to lose a mile. Next time you handle a big... I only make recommendations. Well, look, when you issue a sum money, even if it's half of what they're asking for, it shows that you tried. And then whenever you try and reuse the tarp, reuse the actual thing with holes in it, and you realize, oh, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have tried and reused the tarp. I'm an adjuster. I didn't know how that worked. You usually, you, you, you get back to them within three months, faster than three months. What's up guys, today marks an important day. Here we are like almost eight months after the hurricane happened and we've got a, a big adjuster appointment. Uh, today I'm gonna be dealing with an unreasonable insurance company, an adjuster. The insurance company's gonna bust our balls. This guy told me to tarp the roof. Now he's going back on his word. I'm gonna hold him accountable to it. In Alabama, it's a one party state. He does not want me filming him, but I don't give up. Yep, that's right. And you're gonna learn uh, exactly how to deal with one of these people that are toughest negotiators in the world. And see, it's not just him that's the problem, it's the people behind the scenes. This is a, a very large insurance company, it's a very large insurance claim, and when that happens, the insurance company denies, delays, and defers responsibility. So let's go on this plane. Let's go. You didn't go down there. All right, so we just had a little uh, warm up here with the engineers and I told them that, uh, see engineers, they work for the insurance companies and they get, they get paid to say there's no damage, but they have licenses in a code of ethics that says if there is in fact damage, they can lose their license, they get caught falsifying reports, they can be put in jail, and we're attached to some major players. Uh, that literally have put millions of dollars aside to make sure policyholders are taken care of. And here we are on a job with a couple engineers that are here to be enforcers of the insurance company. And I just let them know, hey, dude, we can come for your license and we can pursue criminal charges. And I got a really rich guy and I'm a part of an organization and that's all we do. So go ahead and Google Hurricane Sandy where uh, engineers have been arrested. Look at the guys in handcuffs and think about that when you get on this roof and try and say there's no wind damage. The reason why they haven't given any money and the reason why you're here is there's a wind-driven rain exclusion on the policy. It says that only a storm-created opening can be covered. You understand? This one's clearly got a storm-created opening. It's completely ripped off. We can't stop the water from coming in like it keeps coming in. The buildings are still wet. There's all the people. Please come here. Do you know the deductible on this building? Oh, yeah. How much? Which building is this? What's the deductible on this building? Which building is this? Uh, let's, uh, let's get them on this roof. This is the s section of the roof that's completely ripped off. And the yeah, biggest problem is, the biggest problem is water's still actually, right, where the roofs came off, water's still coming in, okay? Now, we talked yesterday and you told me, we talked yesterday, this roof is blown off. What, what wind-driven rain exclusion, what wind-driven rain exclusion would apply to this building? Around the windows and the doors. What about the roof that's blown off? Well, if there's a continuation from here that goes all the way down on all the buildings, sure. Okay, so the water's still coming in, the roof's still blown that's off. That's what we're here to do. Let's no, but, no, but I'm asking you a question. You said you didn't pay I'm not, uh, be know. because there was a $50,000 deductible. Now, the, uh, one quarter of the roof, 250,000. One quarter of the dry in, 200,000. One quarter of the build back. Do you see how that's more than 50,000 for this building? Why isn't there money for this building? Uh, so these guys would have to take their wind driven. How much time did you spend on this building? How much? Look at the roof. No, bro. I'm to, I'm, don't, don't bro me. No, well, listen, this is how we're going to do it. Do you know? How much time did you spend in this building? I mean, inside? Yeah. It's hard to say. 30 minutes? Uh, we looked at... How much time have you personally spent on this property? You know, I didn't time it. An hour? Uh, I didn't time it. You've been here less than an hour, would you agree? No, I wouldn't agree. How much, how much would you say? It's hard to say, man. Huh? It's hard to say. 
Well, in your- That's irrelevant. No, it's not. The roof is is blown off and there's undisputed amount of money. Within the first time that I got Mm -hmm. here, that we were gonna need experts to look. No, no, we, we, we were here, we showed you the pictures of the roof being blown off. I know, I've seen and, it. And so why didn't you write an estimate for this building alone? Because it's not up to me. That's why these guys are involved. So you could That's write emergency services. I can only es- write recommendations. Yeah. I only give recommendations. That's so it. how could you make a recommendation with spending less than an hour in this building? That's untrue that I've spent less than an hour. How much, two really- hours? So. Is it three? Experts involved, Is it three hours that you spent here? These people still aren't in their homes. All right. Cool. I just want to know why you don't have a count for the windows. Because there's some obvious windows that are damaged, right? They're blown out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking about yeah, why didn't, you, why didn't you give an estimate for that? That's a storm created opening, right? Yep, it is. Yeah, where's we that? talked about that. How long has it been? How long has it been? How long? Since the beginning of the storm? It's been a little while. Nine months? I think that's how long it's been, yeah. Well, luckily today you'll spend more than an hour. Luckily. Hopefully we can get this resolved. Get these people Hopefully. back into their homes. That'd be great. I'd love it. Do you know what happened last time we came here to tarp this roof? The last time we came to tarp it or untarp it? Untarp it. It didn't happen. Why? Because somebody didn't want the liability of pulling it off and having to put it back on was the way I understood it. You had a preferred contractor here, right? Uh, All right, all right, that's what he said. He said he couldn't reuse the tarp because there's holes in it. Right, you have to redo it. You want me to reuse the tarp is what you came here for, right? Today? No, the last time you wanted me to reuse the tarp. I don't, I didn't have any opinion. How long ago was that? I didn't have any opinion. How long ago was that? It's three months. Okay. Do you know what you told the HOA president, how long it would take for you to get a second inspection? So You said two weeks. There's only certain time, there's only certain control and, and, of this process that I have. Okay, and but that's e- not either one way, of those things. either way, You're it's been. You're trying to hold me. It's been three for months. Stuff that I have absolutely it's no It's been three over. months. I only make recommendations. Do you, re- do you recognize? I don't release anything. I don't make any payments. Do you realize it's I don't been three months? Any funds. Do you realize it's they been three able months? They are to do whatever they want to do. Uh huh. I only make recommendations. Okay. So you should have so recommended. You're not listening to anything I'm saying. I don't, listen, the recommendation, if I if I were you, would be, we've waited six months. Mm-hmm. Okay. We have to get this report back to them on the roof. We cannot wait three more months because there's people out of their homes. Did you tell them that? Um, I, I think that they're aware that it's a bad situation. Okay. Well, three months went past that day when you tried to reuse the tarp and here we are. And what are we looking at? What are we looking at? I'm looking at you. Well, we're looking at a roof. And why are we looking at it? Because we need to figure out the uh, context for the claim. What context? What happened? What know? about the pictures I sent you that said? Look. Come okay, on. get up there. Let's go. It's about the policy. It's about the policy. Guess what, they're still paying on their new policy. You're still collecting money from these people, you know that? That's exactly what it's about. You continue to collect money, but don't pay out. It's about the policy. So that when the eye wall of a hurricane comes on and blows your roof off, you have coverage. That's why. Start over here. This one, we'll start where the big hole is. I know, dude. 
You're not afraid. You yeah. You don't hide nothing. I mean, every time that you go to a, do one of those interviews where someone's ripped somebody off, they act the same exact uh -huh. way, don't they? I asked Mr. how many windows that he had as documented as damage. He couldn't even give me a number nine months later. But you will schedule an appointment three months from now, and then maybe six weeks from that, I'll get an answer. Tear it off while we're here. I've been walking this thing for eight months, trying to keep the place dry, because I know that's what I'm responsible for doing, is keeping it dry, and that ain't easy. And I know that's not your fault that we had a storm, but it is the insurance company's fault, or your, or somebody's, that it hasn't been taken care of in eight months. I mean, I met you a day or two after the storm, uh, we walked around here with Lee and Evan, I mean Ethan and Cagney and looked at three or four units that were some of the worst damaged ones. We didn't look at the other 50 that were also messed up, including mine. We didn't go on the roof and I guess you were here for maybe an hour, hour and a half and I hadn't seen you again until I came back to put that tarp on. I mean, three months ago, you came out here with a roofer and um, to take the tarp off, examine the roof, and put the old tarp back on. The roofer that you hired wouldn't do that because he said it would ruin his reputation. You said it'd be two weeks and you'd be back to do it. Two weeks. That's been over three months ago. Well, that was my mistake. I should never put time constraints on stuff like this because I only have control over very small parts of this process. I only make recommendations. I can tell them what I think and what I see, but ultimately it's the carrier's decision to do what they want. Did you get any response from that? From the carrier when you said two weeks and three weeks, three months has gone by, was there any response from the carrier as to why? And I get it why you can only make recommendations until you get it. But was there any response from the carrier in that regard? Um, not that I recall. I think that it was a scheduling issue too. I mean, it was getting these guys back and, you know. Because really, in some cases, your hands are tied. You can only recommend. But if a carrier, if you're saying the carrier didn't come out or if something didn't happen, I'm just wondering if they communicated with you as to why three months went by before they didn't do anything or, or give you any recommendation. Hey, get back out there. Did they communicate with you? I don't recall specifics on the conversation. Around. They had already sent the forensic adjusters out here. They know they know everything that's messed up, other than the roof, but they never did anything about it. We didn't get any money to fix anything. I mean, I got 68 owners here who can't use their home for eight months, and they're they're they've been very patient about it, but they're they're also very upset about it. Um, and this is the part where I feel like, how quickly can you get us an estimate for the undisputed amount? I need one thing from you guys at this point. I need all of this stuff to come off today and tomorrow so these guys can look at what's on the roof. Because now, that's it. nine months, now it's, a, now it's a priority that you get what you want? We're here, man, what do you, I don't want anything. Okay, no, We're gonna, it's gonna come off as fast as possible. I mean, it's, I'm getting more people here. It's going to come off as fast as possible. That was my concern. And I if you have to wait one extra day on Memorial Day, you're going to wait one extra day on Memorial I Day. Don't, I'll stay here till the middle of next week if I need. Great, to. that would be best. You know, and, and we really do not appreciate you setting this thing up for Memorial Day weekend, one of the three biggest weekends of the year. But I, I damn sure wasn't going to cancel it because it could have been another three months before you come back. You just want to fix, they right? work for me. Right. You just want. To I hired them yeah. because they can do things that I can't do on my own. Right. I can't hire my own attorney. I can't hire my own adjusters. So they're they're. I can't fix all this stuff when it gets wet. Who put the money up to fix it? I, and y'all put the money up, and I I I have it. I, there's no way I could have gotten 
moisture mediation for $600,000. They wouldn't have done it. So these people work for me and they're doing a fantastic job. What, what, do, you, what do you think has gone wrong on the project? And how do we, how do we make it go right? Get the tarps off and let these guys look at it. And then- Have these guys not been here? Well, what do you, what do you- how, much, how many windows are damaged? We're here. Where's, what are their notes on the windows? They're the same guys. You know, he, he said it's the same those, freaking those guys. guys. Inspected they the inspected, inspected everything. Uh -huh. Where are the notes from that inspection six months ago? It's, you know, what about, what about, it. What about the emergency it services that are for that building? Huh? No draw, no, no, no documentation? Like I say, I only make recommendations. Quit yeah. pointing at me like I'm making all these but calls. But you didn't take the time. You didn't take the time. That's why you feel bad. I don't feel bad. You should. There's 68 people outside of their home. I mean, you, wait, wait, wait. You, you don't feel bad, meaning what has occurred, or you don't feel like anything that has occurred has gone wrong? Because um, I feel horrible for what's gone on to these homeowners. It's not my responsibility, but I feel horrible for what has gone through them. Agreed. And, but you didn't agree because what you just said is no. He wants me to feel bad about you know. I, but part I, of it. But, but the thing that y'all aren't looking at, y'all have no. The policy and the wording of the policy does not mean anything to y'all. Why is that? The hole in the roof that where the sh where the roof is gone and the people can't move in. But that is. The, is it not your responsibility to get them emergency services money in a timely manner? You don't give a shit about the contract either. Because it says in the contract, if emergency services, that you are responsible to get it in a timely fashion. It says you're going to do a proper investigation. Where's that? How about, how about your respect for the policy? Do you feel you did a proper investigation in a timely fashion? I felt that I knew that I needed from the get-go that there were multiple things going on here and I was going to have to get multiple experts to come in to assess everything in here as far as building consultants and engineers. So when you told me to tarp two thirds of the roof and then you didn't look at the roof and you didn't look at the policy. So there was obvious. You didn't know about the exclusions. There was yes, I did. I knew it coming Well, in. then why'd you tell me to tarp two thirds of the roof? So there was obvious wind damage. Okay, there great. Were multiple, there were multiple areas where there's obvious wind damage. I mean, that, on, on the eastern elevations, there are multiple sections where the roof was peeled up like a tin can. This is not undisputed. But my question is, do you feel to the, to the homeowners that you did your, fulfilled your obligation of a timely, thorough inspection and response? Can you look him in the eye? And, do you, and it's okay if you made a mistake. That's not, I'm not trying to gig you on that. But do you feel that you gave these homeowners timely, response and a thorough investigation or in hindsight did do we all how do we all that's it yes or no do you feel like you gave him a timely and thorough investigation or in hindsight could have been done differently i think there are a hundred things that could have been done, done differently on all corners of this but what do you think could have been done differently and how do we fix it but my hands are tied because I knew in something like this, we're gonna have to have other people's opinions other than just mine and his on what is what. And that's a wrap for an awesome mission, man. From Naples, Florida, Gulf Shores, Alabama, we compressed time. We had a big ass confrontation. And I will tell you, pressure makes diamonds. And I had to send this video off to my lawyer. I had to have it timestamped. He only allowed me to show you a piece of what we were able to do, but the end result was this adjuster under pressure was very frustrated. There was a lot of mistakes made. And I'm not gonna indoctrinate his character. His job is to make recommendations, but I can tell you that the timelines didn't add up. The stories didn't add up. And under pressure, the man folded and after hours and hours and hours of cross-examination, we talked to the HOA president. In his moment, he delivered and he couldn't help the adjuster be compelled and feel sorry for our case. And if you watch this YouTube episode, you saw us from start to finish go in here, prospect this deal. We took a private jet in front of the hurricane. We intercepted it. We ended up at that property. And now we're fighting nine months later. Follow my journey at largelawsecrets.com for everything in this episode that you couldn't see on YouTube. 
See, because you're gonna learn how to deal with unreasonable adjusters. We filmed the whole process, us going to the board meetings, us prospecting before the process. And so, you know, getting them approved, we're acting as a general contractor, working with third party experts. If you wanna know how to become the large loss boss, you need my course, Large Loss Secrets. So, click the link in the comments, Subscribe, get notifications, and look guys, just remember, pressure makes diamonds. Don't be afraid to ratchet up the pressure on them now.